In the debate over reforming the modern electoral college, the only options discussed seem to be either maintaining the status quo or switching to the popular vote. The status quo seems more likely because switching to the popular vote may be impossible, as Republicans generally feel the current system benefits them, meaning that any reform requires agreement from both parties. One reform option that is never discussed is the original electoral college. However, given the fear of the House of Representatives choosing the president, it is understandable that this option is less than desirable. With hyperpartisan behavior in the House, it seems problematic to give them the responsibility to choose the next president. The reform option that is advocated by this channel was also discussed at the Constitutional Convention. An electors convention would have the 538 electors meet at the seat of government and appoint the next president. To choose electors for this convention, the Hamilton method would ensure a diverse group of electors from the several states. This twofold combination of the Hamilton method and an electors convention would prevent populism and tyranny, as both of them use the framers method. In this video, we will describe the specific reforms to re-establish the United States as a republic in order to defeat populism and tyranny. That being said, the primary questions for this video are, what is the Hamilton method and how does it work? What is the primary reason for using the Hamilton method? Secondary questions include, what is the equation behind the Hamilton method and how would it create multiple parties? What is Duverger's law and how does it relate to the Hamilton method? How does the Hamilton method create multiple parties? And what is an elector threshold? The framers method advocates for the Hamilton method and an electors convention as the key reforms needed to defeat populism and tyranny. An electors convention, discussed at the constitutional convention and previously referred to as the electors method, would use decentralization and deliberation to select the president. An electors convention would have each state choose electors and then send them to meet at the seat of government. This body of electors would be the same size as Congress, however, would be separate from congressional influence. The body of electors would vote until one of the electors achieves a majority of 270 votes. Once the electors choose a president, the body is dissolved as it has served its temporary purpose. An electors convention will be discussed in more detail in future videos. This video will discuss the process of choosing electors to attend an electors convention through the Hamilton method. Whichever method is used to choose electors, it must address the failings of the framers' original electoral college. Specifically, Allowing states to choose electors in any manner they wished resulted in the nearly uniform winner-take-all general ticket method. With this process, political parties chose their own presidential candidates and forced states to use the winner-take-all. This allowed the party's candidate to achieve a majority in the election which negated the electoral college's use of decentralization and deliberation. The solution is to introduce an explicit method that populates an electors convention while preventing any political party from achieving a majority. Preventing a majority will force the electors into deliberations to choose the president. The best available method to choose a variety of electors and prevent a majority is the Hamilton method. Let's understand an overview of how the Hamilton method and an electors convention would work, and then dive into the specific details. First, political parties within each state submit elector lists with their ranked order to their respective state's Department of Elections. On election day, voters cast ballots for these slates of electors. Votes are then divided proportionally through the Hamilton method, and parties are awarded electors based on the vote percentage they received. Percentage voting through the Hamilton method would eliminate the two-party system and create a multiple-party system in the United States. Once electors of the several states are determined, they are sent to meet at the seat of government. There are many benefits of the Hamilton method, but the primary reason for its use is the prevention of a majority so the ensuing electors convention may perform as intended. Numerous parties from across the several states will win electors, meaning no single party has a majority, and therefore its candidate cannot claim victory before an electors convention. If there is a predetermined majority, there is no need for deliberation. Political parties may decide a candidate and once again force voters to choose between one of two choices. This is exactly why the framers' electoral college design failed. In order to include deliberation in the selection of the president, any proposed reform must prevent a single-party majority. The reason the United States only has two viable political parties is because it uses single-member districts. According to the French political scientist Maurice Duverger, there are three different modes of elections that will determine the number of candidates in an election 
and the number of politicians that end up in government. In a single-member district with plurality voting, the result will be two candidates in elections and two parties in government. In a single-member district with multiple ballots, the result will be multiple candidates in elections with the potential for multiple parties in government. In a proportional voting system, where voting is based on a percentage, the result will be multiple candidates in elections and multiple parties in government. Single-member district methods with either plurality voting or multiple ballots are candidate-centered, whereas proportional voting systems are decentralized and deliberative. The United States uses single-member districts with plurality voting resulting in a candidate-centered two-party system. To populate an elector's convention with 538 electors and guarantee deliberation, the most logical system to use is proportional voting. When voters realize their votes will not be wasted, they will have a stronger incentive to support alternative parties. Giving a political party the exact proportion of representation based on the number of votes they received will invite more parties to enter elections. With numerous parties vying for and winning elector seats, the body of electors meeting at the seat of government would hold a kaleidoscope of interests. The Hamilton method will create a multiple party system, prevent a majority, and force parties into deliberations to choose the next president. The Hamilton method works like this. The total number of votes in a state is divided by the number of available electors. This equates to D or the number of votes needed per elector. Next, divide the total number of votes of each party by D, and this will equal the number of electors each party is awarded. There will be one or two remaining electors. Whichever party or parties have the highest remaining votes will be awarded the final one or two votes. Let's use a real-world example to see how this might work in a U.S. election. In 1992, Ross Perot made significant inroads into the presidential election as a third-party candidate. In that election, there were about 2.3 million votes. Dividing this number by Minnesota's 10 electoral votes gives us 234,794 votes per elector. The three candidates were Bill Clinton of the Democratic Party, George H.W. Bush of the Republican Party, and Ross Perot of the Reform Party. How would the Hamilton method work when applied to Minnesota's 1992 presidential election? Each party's vote would be divided by the vote per elector, which is 234,794. This gives us the initial quota seen here. With only nine electoral votes distributed so far, the final vote will need to be awarded to the party with the highest remainder. Each party's remainder may be converted to real votes. In this particular election, the Reform Party had the highest remainder votes and is given the final electoral vote. Instead of Bill Clinton winning all 10 electoral votes, four electoral votes would go to the Democrats, three to the Republicans, and three to the Reform Party. The Hamilton method is much more representative of the voters in elections than using the winner-take-all method. Any party that wants to achieve an elector must win a minimum threshold. Under the Hamilton method, each state would have its own minimum threshold to award a party or candidate with an elector. To find a state's threshold, simply divide one elector by the number of electors available in the state. For Minnesota, one elector divided by 10 electors gives them a 10% threshold. The smallest states with only three electors have a threshold of 33%. The largest state, California with 54 electors, has a threshold of 1.85%. Texas with 40 electors is 2.5% to achieve a minimum of one elector. The larger the state, the more likely they will have more political parties achieve electoral votes. The main point of using the Hamilton method is to prevent a majority at an elector convention. This will force deliberation on the electors when choosing the next president. Aside from being the catalyst for a successful electors convention, there are a number of positive effects on American elections as a whole. The following video will cover the numerous benefits of using the Hamilton method. More information about the Hamilton method may be found in the book, The Framers Method, How the Electoral College and the Hamilton Method Can Defeat Populism and Tyranny. Thanks again for watching The Framers Method. If you want to support this channel, please like and subscribe on our social media platforms and consider supporting this channel on your preferred membership platform, all of which can be found on the website at framersmethod.com.